My name's Dave Hill from Crane Song, and we're at Music Mesa, and what is it? 2014, I guess. Kind of a scary thing, actually, when you think about it. But we have two new things here that we're showing. First is a 500 series tube preamp using a 12AX7, and it does all the tricky stuff and has 200 volt power supply internal to it and is actually within the power spec of the 500 frame rack. And it is, it is designed for color. You have the ability to do the input gain, output gain trick for overdrive. The second tube stage can have negative feedback or no negative feedback, so you get two different colors that way by changing the interaction of the preamp three position pad, low cut is 24 dB per octave at 90 hertz. Also has a DI input put in it and of course the phantom power switch. But and it uses a standard 12AX7 tube so it's not like it's built with something that you're not going to be able to get a tube for it if, if the tube ever fails in it which you know one needs to think about those sort of things. It's been shipping for about three weeks at this point. So and, pretty, pretty and, sparkly new. Yeah, pretty sparkly new, and the response has been like really, really good with it. Between the preamp and the Falcon compressor, you got serious rock and roll vocal channel. But I, I just did a project where I used a pair of these on overheads on drums with KM84 or no KM83 microphones. You know the Omnis, gorgeous sounding. The the over it was just so smooth it was like. Gee, this is like, maybe this will become a standard way of doing it. The other thing that we are showing here is a vinyl emulation plug-in for Pro Tools. AAX format, both DSP, native, you know, Mac, PC. And essentially what it does is a little bit complex, but it's also, well, the code's actually quite complex. The harmonic control does two things. It, it does high frequency compression, because you know, vinyl, you can't, does that. And it also generates some vocal kind of mid-range harmonic content, which thickens up voices. Now, and it's kind of a how much, and the color switch, what it does is silver being the least affected, deep being the most. The more you go towards deep, the more of this mid-range color you get and the lower in frequency it goes. The dynamic control does a different kind of mid-range color, you know, no high frequency compression on the dynamic control, but it does the tracing and tracking distortions, which are essentially, in simple terms, time modulated harmonic content. You know, and, and there is some audio samples out on the website, but it matches, you know, an actual vinyl record very, very close. In the process of doing this, I had Master Disc in New York cut me a reference record, loaded it back into the system, and then worked with the code to match the sound of the reference record. So have it, you done this because you're a vinyl fan? Well, it, it's the logical next thing to do, really, after doing tape emulation. And, and it's a completely different sound. And yes, I got about 3,000 LPs sitting at home, and you know, my Thorns turntable and the SME tone arm and the whole deal. So, yeah, I, I like vinyl. It has, an, it has a different kind of sound to it. And this works very well to smooth things. It, you know, it works nice on voices to fatten and enriching them. Uh, guitars, it's just really, it's amazing on a guitar actually, particularly stereo guitar. And then uh, you can also like use the dynamic thing because it's time modulating the harmonic content that if you had a, like say a snare drum and it was too snappy and you wanted to soften it, make it a little bit more appropriate for a jazzy kind of thing, you can use that and it kind of you know messes with the transients because of the time modulation and gives you a softer sound. So have you modeled the scratches and the warps and the bumps and the bits of blood? No tick noises, no warps and bumps and none of that nonsense. You know, this is about creating a color, not like some gimmick kind of thing, which some of them actually are. There's also a dither control in there. And what that does is two things. First of all, it applies dither at a, a level for 16-bit dithering. But 
it also time modulates the internal parameters inside of the plugin because you know all that random noise and surface noise actually does that sort of a thing. But you can use it just as a dither source if you would like. And it has essentially the same spectrum uh, of an uncut piece of vinyl. So going back to the hardware world, um, any challenges for getting this into the rack? Well, there's all sorts of challenges for fitting a tube, appropriate power supply, mic transformer, output transformer, and, and other associated stuff in the space and within the power requirements that it needs. Oh yeah, and this case is actually a prototype of a four slot position rack that we're gonna build. And we're gonna actually do it with a walnut case on it, you know, a furniture kind of thing. But this, these, I use the Lundahl transformers, they're U-metal shielded, they're low profile and they fit. And they sound really good, you know, which helps a lot. But uh, yeah, a lot of mechanical issues trying to make that all work and then you know, selecting low microphonic tube is important, and so we select them, and you know, once they test up, you know, tap, tap, if, if it's too noisy, change the tube kind of thing. So each one's going to be hand-selected? Yeah, yeah, you have to. And actually, uh, of all crazy things, we're, we're finding the Chinese tubes work the best for us, you know, in this particular circuit. What works? Yeah, well, it's whatever works. Uh, part of it is because we're running the heater on 5 volts DC. You know, it's a p little bit of a power consumption issue, but it gives you a longer life out of the tube also.